All right, let's shift our attention now to the life and legacy of the late Kenyan president, Mwai Kibaki. He passed away this week at the age of 90. Kibaki led the country from 2002 to 2013. His tenure was marred by disputed, uh, the disputed 20, 2007 polls that led to deadly violence. Researcher Sipo Mandula joins us now to discuss this further. And we highlight that, um, Advocate Mandula, the violence of 2007 uh, when Mwai Kibaki was seeking a second term uh, contesting against Raila Odinga. Uh, but that's just one aspect, is it not, of this man's legacy. There are various other aspects, some positive no, correctly, uh, Tulas, uh, Jumbo Africa, to your viewers. Remember that the legacy of our elders having, ten, having reached 90, uh, there is a lot that I think we should not look at his uh, term of office from that era. Let's look at him when Kenya got independence in 1963, how he has been close to power, close to people like Jomo Kenyatta, close to Daniel Arab Moi. Despite that, he had tensions with them at some point with uh, Daniel Arab Moi. And being the third president, who will have what we call a full uh, military honor for him, just like the other former presidents. And one other aspect that I think his political career, if you can look at, it, at the teeth that he has managed to go through, look at the role he played in the drafting of the Kenyan constitution in 2010. Look at this role, Tulas, when he brought the primary education, access to education for young people of Kenya. The second aspect, judiciary. He was able to turn judiciary around, the economy. That's one aspect that Kenyans are still lamenting, that post-Arab Moi and the coming of Kibaki, despite that some of us will know him as a president who uh, took oath in a wheelchair, and a president who have laughed at that even his wife at some point, say, tell the, this nation that you have one man and one wife. But overall, continentally to us, I saw one aspect that we are missing. He has played a key role in the conflict of the southern Sudan. And despite that South, South Sudan it is still having challenges, he played a key role in the question of the Somalian uh, crisis of jihadists. Even if others, they were saying he brought operations in Somalia, but there were, there were some tensions. But in short, the life of Emilio Stanley Mwai Kibaki is being celebrated in Nairobi. But obviously, uh, Advocate Mandula, this is not to whitewash the negative aspects of his, um, of his legacy. I mean, I'm glad you mentioned the positives uh, that uh, economic growth, Kenya hitting around 7% in his first term, uh, that free um, you know, a primary school education to children. You cannot dispute that. The constitution being adopted in 2010, which decentralized power, etc. Um, those are positives that you can pinpoint uh, that were achieved, but it, it, the negatives cannot be downplayed either. That, that violence in 2007 brought Kenya to the brink, didn't it? No, no, correctly. And remember that that's where we saw the role of the late Secretary General Kofi Annan. But remember again, who was at the picture once more? Raila Odinga, the same person whom we see as likely the fifth president of Kenya come August 2022. Raila Odinga both him, they had a tension again during that uh, era, even if there was coalition. But that aspect, again, of ethnic politics in Kenya having crept in can be one of his challenges. The issues around maritime boundary between Somalia and Kenya was uh, something that has never been dealt with. The Uganda issue as well of the border dispute of the island was never dealt with. So, you know, in some instance, the legacy of our elder statesmen, we cannot rub it only with the negatives only, but there are some positives. Hence, I was saying earlier, the Kenyans are still holding him with high regard compared to Daniel Arab Moi. I look at the issues of infrastructure. I look at the issues how within the East Africa community, he engaged with the then president of Uganda, actually the current one, Mr. Venu, on saying that, we should not engage on politics only of this region, but let's look at economic growth. Let's look at unity and peace of this region. And hence we can say, yes, the issues of the post-2007 elections was one of the negative ones. Mm. But 2013 as well, to last, and 2017, we had the same issue of election uh, tensions in that country. I think Kenya has a problem when it comes to e e e election acceptance of the results. Yeah. In
in fact, you take me to my last question. The trajectory um, yes. further into the terrain of uh, democracy and cementing that democracy, right? Because that initially was one of the main objectives, the liberation, total liberation uh, of Africa was one of the objectives of the OAU, which then transformed itself into the African Union um, around 2003, with now this agenda 2063 and also issues of silencing the guns in Africa and democratization uh, being one of the key pathways towards the attainment of um, you know, that, that Agenda 2063 and its noble goals. People such as Mwai Kibaki, um, to what extent do we still look to people who have been around that long, um, who have been part of that struggle as far back as the history that I've just related now? Uh, and it, many say it's not advisable for us to continue to look to that generation for leadership. You see it in many, many countries, don't you? Correctly, we can be talking about uh, presidents who have been sitting to power for maybe too long. But let's look at this one, having been a first president, president only for a decade, and look at his legacy again that he left Kenya with 2030 vision. What Kenya, that Uhuru Kenyatta took over, was what Kibaki has already built on. You look at that at some point, 2016, he was already an envoy of the UNESCO on water in Africa, meaning he was moving from politics of politics of politics, just of engagement, but politics of the economy, politics of culture, politics of security. It is always important for us to always have this knowledge of these elders. Like I said, it doesn't have a tainted a history like other leaders who want to stay into power. Like those who stay in power more than 25 years, you go to West Africa, you come to the Horn of Africa, you have those leaders who are still appetite for power. But you look at Ibaki, he went even on a very silent uh, disappearance from the politics of Kenya compared to Raila Odinga that I keep on mentioning to us because I think it's a man to watch because even if he has given his own views about the passing of Kibaki and many leaders, because one thing I've learned and I was shaking, many African leaders have paid their respect to Kibaki. I've never seen anyone singling out some of the errors or some of the tensions that Kibaki has left. But all of them, they are saying he was a great son of the soil and a great son of Africa. Advocate Sipo Mandula, I've enjoyed your insights here on today. Thank you uh, for weighing in on this. Of course, the issues of legacy are always complex. Human legacies are, especially if you've lived your life in public life and served in some of the capacities uh, such as the late Mwai Kibaki served in the country of Kenya.